17 reasons why car shuts off when in motion or stopped. Your car shutting down when you are driving down or stop is a scary experience. You're driving along, and then, all of a sudden, your vehicle stops working. What's going on? Why did my car shut off when I stopped? Is it a safety feature? These are the questions you ask yourself. This blog post will explore why your car shuts off when you slow down or stop. We will also provide solutions to each problem so you can get back on the road. Let's get started. First, understand this. Whenever you face these problems, they are either caused by air fuel system malfunction or electrical system issues. To be more specific car shutting down when you stop or slow down may be caused due to clogged fuel filter, weak fuel pump, faulty alternator, bad mass airflow sensor, foul spark plugs, faulty starter motor, and many more. Other than these, there can be various reasons for your car to shut down. We have listed all the possible reasons below, along with their solutions. Table of Contents 1. Faulty Fuel Pump. A fuel pump gives your car the power it needs to run by sending gasoline from the tank to the engine. If the fuel pump is not working correctly, it can cause your car to shut down when you stop or slow down. What's the issue? This happens because the engine needs a constant supply of gasoline to run. When you stop or slow down, the engine's demand for gasoline decreases. The engine will shut down if the malfunctioning fuel pump cannot send enough gasoline to the engine. What are the symptoms? One of the most common symptoms of a faulty fuel pump is the car's engine stalling. This can happen while the vehicle is idling or while driving. If the problem is severe enough, it can cause the engine to shut down completely. Other symptoms of a faulty fuel pump include loss of power while accelerating and trouble to start the engine. How to fix it? The solution to this problem is to replace the fuel pump with a new one. This will ensure that the engine has enough pressure to keep running and will not shut down when the car stops or slows down. The cost of replacing a fuel pump can range from $400 to $1,000. 2. Clogged fuel filter. A clogged fuel filter can cause your car to shut down when stopped or slowing down. The fuel filter is responsible for filtering out impurities in the fuel, and if it becomes clogged, it can restrict the fuel flow to the engine. What's the issue? The engine needs a constant supply of fuel-air mixture to run. When the fuel filter is clogged, it can restrict fuel flow and cause the engine to shut down. This can cause the engine to misfire or stall. In some cases, it can even cause the car to shut down completely. What are the symptoms? A clogged fuel filter can significantly impact your car's performance. If you suspect that your fuel filter may be clogged, there are a few different symptoms that you can look for. One of the most common signs is a decrease in fuel efficiency. If your car struggles to get the same mileage as it used to, it may be due to a clogged fuel filter. Another symptom to watch out for is engine misfires. If your car is experiencing sporadic bursts of power, it could be because the fuel isn't reaching the engine properly. You may also notice a drop in fuel pressure on the fuel pressure gauge. How to fix it? The solution is to replace the fuel filter with a new one. This will ensure that there is no restriction in the flow of fuel to the engine. It will prevent the engine from shutting down when stopped or slowing down. You can also try using a higher quality fuel filter less likely to become clogged. The cost of replacing a fuel filter can range from $30 to $50. 3. Faulty Alternator The alternator is responsible for charging the battery and powering the electrical system. If the alternator is malfunctioning, it can cause your car to shut down when you stop or slow down. What's the issue? This is because the alternator provides power to the engine and other electrical components when the car runs. If the alternator is not working properly, the engine will not receive the power it needs to continue running. One reason why your alternator may not be working properly could be a problem with the alternator itself. Another reason could be a problem with the car's battery. If the battery is not providing enough power to the alternator, this can cause the alternator to shut down. 
What are the symptoms? One of the most common signs that your alternator is going bad is dimming, flickering headlights. Another common symptom of a faulty alternator is problems with your electrical system. If you notice that your car stereo is cutting in and out or that your power windows are slower than usual, it's a good idea to check your alternator. How to fix it? Fortunately, you can do a few things to solve the problem. First, Check the alternator belt to see if it's loose or damaged. If so, tighten it or replace it. Next, check the alternator itself for any signs of damage. If you see any damage, you'll need to replace the alternator. Finally, make sure the battery connections are clean and tight. Dirty or loose connections can prevent the battery from being charged properly. If you take these steps and your car still shuts down, you'll need to take it to a mechanic for further diagnosis. 4. Empty fuel tank or low fuel pressure. Did you know that one of the reasons your car might shut down when slowing down or stopping is an empty fuel tank or low fuel pressure? Here's a closer look at why this happens and how you can solve the issue. What's the issue? When your fuel tank is empty, or the pressure is low, the engine isn't getting the proper fuel stream. This can cause the engine to misfire or shut down completely. In some cases, you might be able to restart the engine, but it will eventually shut down again. What are the symptoms? One common symptom of low fuel pressure is a decrease in fuel economy. If your vehicle suddenly seems to be guzzling gas, it could be because the fuel pump isn't providing enough pressure to atomize the fuel properly. As a result, more fuel is wasted, and your mileage suffers. Another symptom of low fuel pressure is engine hesitation. If your engine sputters or stalls when you try to accelerate, it could be a sign that the pump can't keep up with the demand for fuel. How to fix it? To solve this issue, you must ensure that your fuel tank is full and that the pressure is where it should be. You can also try using a higher octane gas to see if that makes a difference. If none of these solutions work, it's time to take your car to a mechanic to check it out. They'll be able to identify the root of the problem and get your vehicle back up and running in no time. 5. Faulty ignition switch. A faulty ignition switch can cause your car to shut down while you're stopped or slowing down. This can be extremely dangerous, as it can prevent you from being able to restart your car if it stalls in traffic. A faulty ignition switch can also cause your car's electrical system to malfunction, leading to other problems. What's the issue? The most common reason an ignition switch goes bad is wear and tear. Over time, the contacts inside the switch can get worn down, making it harder for the electrical current to flow through. Sometimes, dirt and debris can also build up inside the switch, preventing it from working properly. What are the symptoms? A faulty ignition switch can cause a variety of problems. The most common symptom is that the engine will stall while the car runs. How to fix it? Fortunately, this problem can be easily solved by replacing the ignition switch. Once the new switch is in place, the car should run smoothly again. Depending on the make and model of your car, the cost of a new ignition switch can range from $50 to $200. If you're lucky, your car might still be under warranty, which could cover the replacement cost. 6. MAF Mass Flow Sensor Malfunction A MAF Mass Air Flow Sensor is an important component of any vehicle's fuel injection system. The sensor measures the air entering the engine and sends this information to the engine control unit, which then adjusts the air-to-fuel ratio accordingly. If the MAF sensor is not working properly, it can cause several problems, including shutting down of car when slowing down or stopping. What's the issue? The engine needs a specific amount of air-fuel mixture to function. If the MAF sensor is not sending the correct information to AQ, it will cause the engine to run lean, too much air, not enough fuel, or rich, too much fuel, not enough air. If it senses that there is not enough airflow, it will instruct the engine to shut down. This can happen when the sensor is dirty or damaged. What are the symptoms? One common symptom of a bad MAF sensor is decreased fuel economy. 
your engine will have to work harder to get the same amount of power, so you'll end up using more fuel. You may also notice that your engine feels less powerful than usual or stalls more often. Another symptom to watch out for is strange idling. How to fix it? One way to fix this problem is to clean the MAF sensor. You can remove the sensor and use compressed air to blow any dirt and debris out of it. If it doesn't work, try replacing it. Replacing a MAF sensor is not a cheap repair. Depending on the make and model of your vehicle, it can cost anywhere from $200 to $600. 7. Engine Control Unit Issues The AQ, or Electronic Control Unit, is the brain of your car's engine. It controls all the electronic systems in your vehicle, including the ignition, fuel injection, and emission systems. When something goes wrong with the AQ, it can cause your car to run pulley or even shut down completely. What's the issue? The AQ interprets data from all the sensors in your car. This includes the fuel pressure sensor, MAF sensor, and others. Now, what happens when the AQ malfunctions? Well, it can no longer accurately interpret the data from these sensors. This can cause your car to run lean or rich, leading to stalling and shutting down. In some cases, the AQ might tell the engine to shut down to prevent damage. What are the symptoms? Several symptoms can indicate an AQ malfunction. If your car is stalling or shutting off when you stop or slow down, it means a problem with the AQ. Other symptoms include poor fuel economy, engine misfires, and the check engine light. How to fix it? Most AQ malfunctions can be fixed with a software update or by replacing the AQ entirely. In some cases, the problem may be with another component in the engine, such as a sensor. If this is the case, the mechanic will need to diagnose and repair the problem before they can update the AQ software or replace the unit. To help prevent an AQ malfunction, keep up with all scheduled maintenance for your car. This includes regular oil changes and tune-ups. Additionally, avoid making any modifications to your car's engine. These can cause problems with the AQ and lead to malfunctions. 8. Foul Spark Plugs Spark plugs are an essential component of any gasoline engine. They provide the spark that ignites the air-fuel mixture in the cylinders, which starts the combustion process. Foul spark plugs can prevent the engine from starting or cause it to shut down while driving. What's the issue? The problem is most likely caused by deposits on the plugs that prevent them from firing correctly. These deposits can be caused by several things, such as oil leaks, fuel contamination, or even carbon buildup. What are the symptoms? The most common symptom of foul spark plugs is oil on spark plugs and a loss of power, particularly when accelerating. The engine may also run rough, misfire, or stall. In some cases, you may notice an increase in fuel consumption or exhaust emissions. How to fix it? If you think your spark plugs are fouled, the best solution is to clean them. One way to clean spark plugs is to use a wire brush. This method is also effective, but it can be time-consuming. You will need to remove the spark plug from the engine and use the wire brush to clean the deposits off the plug. It is also good to check the gap between the spark plug electrodes. If the gap is too wide, the spark plugs will not fire correctly and may cause engine damage. If the gap is too narrow, the spark plugs will fire too often and may cause pre-ignition. Pre-ignition can lead to engine damage or even engine failure. The last resort is to replace the foul spark plugs. This might cost you anywhere from $20 to $100 per plug, depending on the make and model of your vehicle. 9. Defective idle air control valve. An idle air control valve regulates the amount of air that flows into the engine. When it's not working properly, too much air can flow into the engine, causing it to stall. What's the issue? The most common cause of an IAC valve failure is dirt and debris buildup. These contaminants can cause the valve to become clogged or stick in the open or closed position. Other causes of IAC valve failure include electrical issues, such as a faulty wiring harness, 
or mechanical problems, such as a broken spring or seized linkage. Sometimes, the IAC valve may simply be worn out from normal wear and tear and must be replaced. What are the symptoms? The most common symptom of a defective idle air control valve is a regular or intermittent engine idling. If your car's idle air control valve is not working properly, the engine will either idle too high or too low. In some cases, the engine may stall altogether. Other symptoms include a check engine light, decreased fuel economy, and difficulty starting the engine. How to fix it? To fix a defective idle air control valve, you will need to replace it with a new one. You can purchase an idle air control valve at most auto parts stores. Be sure to get one that is compatible with your vehicle. Once you have replaced the faulty idle air control valve, your engine should run smoothly again. This process will cost you between $200 and $500, depending on the make and model of your vehicle. 10. Bad oxygen sensor. An oxygen sensor is responsible for monitoring the air-fuel mixture in the engine. If the mixture is too rich or too lean, it can cause intermittent starting issues in your car. What's the issue? If the sensor detects that the oxygen level is too low, it will signal the engine computer to adjust the air-fuel mixture. If the mixture is too rich, it can cause the engine to stall, rough idle, or shut down when you stop or slow down. What are the symptoms? If your car's oxygen sensor fails, you may notice a few symptoms. The first is that your engine may run less efficiently, requiring more fuel to maintain power. You may also notice that your engine is misfiring or running rough. Additionally, your check engine light may come on, or you may see increased emissions from your exhaust. How to fix it? If your car's oxygen sensor is bad, it will cause your engine to run inefficiently and produce higher emissions. There are a few fixing strategies you can apply. Here's how. Check the oxygen sensor wiring harness for any signs of damage or corrosion. If the oxygen sensor wiring harness is damaged, repair or replace it as necessary. Inspect the oxygen sensor itself for any signs of damage or corrosion. If the oxygen sensor is damaged, replace it with a new one. Clear any debris around the oxygen sensor so it can properly measure the amount of oxygen in the exhaust gases. Reconnect the oxygen sensor and test drive the car to see if the problem has been fixed. 11. Cracked spark plug wires. Spark plug wires carry the electrical current from the ignition coil to the spark plugs. If these wires are damaged, it can cause starting problems or engine misfires. What's the issue? The most common cause of spark plug wire failure is age and wear. Over time, the wires can become brittle and crack. Other causes of spark plug wire failure include exposure to extreme temperatures, engine vibration, and physical damage. What are the symptoms? The most obvious symptom is a loss of power, as the engine will not be able to create enough spark to run efficiently. Additionally, the engine may misfire or run roughly, and it may also produce unusual sounds. In some cases, cracked spark plug wires can also lead to engine failure. How to fix it? First, check the wires for any cracks or damage. If you find any, replace the wires with new ones. You can also try adding a layer of insulation around the wires to help protect them from oil and moisture. Finally, keep an eye on the wires and replace them if they show any wear or damage. 12. Crankshaft Position Sensor Malfunction The crankshaft position sensor is responsible for relaying information about the engine's speed and position to the electronic control unit. If this sensor is not working properly, it can cause starting issues in your car. What's the issue? The information from the crankshaft position sensor is relayed to the engine control unit, which uses it to control ignition timing and fuel injection. If the crankshaft position sensor isn't working properly, the engine control unit can't make the necessary adjustments, and the engine will shut down. What are the symptoms? Common symptoms of crankshaft position sensor malfunction include rough idling, engine misfiring, and reduced fuel economy. How to fix it? Generally, 
The crankshaft position sensor will need to be replaced to fix the problem. But you can try a few things first, such as cleaning the sensor or resetting the engine control unit. If you're unsure how to do this, it's best to consult a professional. Replacing the crankshaft position sensor is usually pretty straightforward, but the cost of parts and labor can vary depending on your vehicle. In most cases, you're looking at a bill of $200-$300. So, if your check engine light is on, don't delay getting it checked out. The sooner you do, the less it will cost you in the long run. 13. Weak battery. A car needs a battery to start. The alternator charges the battery while the engine is running, and the battery provides power to the starter motor and ignition system when the car isn't running. Without a battery, a car won't start. What's the issue? A weak battery can cause your car to shut down when stopped or slowed down because it can't provide enough power to keep the engine running. What are the symptoms? For one thing, if your headlights seem dimmer than usual, that's a sign that your battery isn't delivering as much power as it should. Or you might see a battery discharge warning on your dashboard. Another symptom is if your car takes longer than usual to start up. If you turn the key and there's a delay before the engine kicks on, that's another sign that your battery is weak. Finally, if your car's electrical accessories, like the radio or the power windows, are working less efficiently than usual, that's another indicator that the battery is losing power. How to fix it? The solution is to replace the battery with a new one. You can also try charging the battery, but if it's too weak, it won't hold a charge and will need to be replaced. A new battery will set you back about $100, depending on the make and model of your car. 14. Faulty Starter Motor A starter motor is responsible for starting your car's engine. When you turn the key in the ignition, the starter motor gets the engine going. If your starter motor is faulty, your car will shut down when you come to a stop or slow down. What's the issue? This is because a faulty starter motor can't provide the power needed to keep the engine running at low speeds. The major causes of starter motor failure are age, corrosion, and electrical problems. Gears inside the starter motor can also wear out, causing the starter to spin but not engage the engine. What are the symptoms? One symptom is a clicking noise when you turn the key in the ignition. This is usually caused by a loose connection between the battery and the starter motor. Another symptom is a grinding noise when you turn the key. This is usually caused by damaged gears in the starter motor. How to fix it? If your starter motor is having problems, follow these steps to fix it. Check the solenoid. The most common issue with starter motors is a bad solenoid. You can check this by tapping on the solenoid with a screwdriver while someone else turns the key in the ignition. If the engine turns over, you know the solenoid is bad and needs to be replaced. Try jump starting the car. If the battery is dead, you may be able to jump start the car from another vehicle. Charge the battery. If the battery is dead, you'll need to charge it before the car starts. Replace the starter motor. If none of these solutions work, then the starter motor may be faulty and need to be replaced. 15. Blown head gasket. A blown head gasket can shut off the car while in motion or commune to a stop if the driver attention is not on the dash to observe temperature rise. 16. No coolant present. Some cars are highly engineered to shut off while in motion answers the car sensors detected no coolant present inside the engine circuit. 17. Faulty ECM relay or fuse Most modern cars that uses electronic control module to control the system operations will shut down the car once the power going to the ECM is disrupted either by relay or fuse responsible for powering the engine electronics management. Conclusion If you've ever been in a situation where your car has shut down when you come to a stop or slow down, then you know how frustrating it can be. Luckily, you can do a few things to fix the problem. If your car is shutting off when you stop or slow down, the most likely culprits are a faulty crankshaft position sensor, a weak battery, or a faulty starter motor. You'll most likely need to replace the part causing the problem. But you can try a few things first, 
such as cleaning the sensor or resetting the engine control unit. If you're unsure how to do this, it's best to consult a professional car. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Frequently asked questions What does it mean when your car dies while idling? There are a few possible reasons why your car might die while idling. One possibility is that the engine is not getting enough fuel. This can be caused by a clogged fuel filter or a blockage in the fuel line. Another possibility is that the spark plugs are worn out or malfunctioning. This can cause the engine to misfire, making it difficult to run at low speeds. Finally, it could be that the idle speed is set too low. It can stall if the engine doesn't have enough time to warm up properly. How does a car start? And how does it keep running? Every time you turn the key in your car's ignition, you're relying on a complex series of events to take place. But have you ever wondered exactly how your car starts? And what keeps it running once it's started? Let's take a closer look at the process of starting a car and some of the key components that keep a car running. When you turn the key, you're activating a small starter motor. This starter motor is responsible for turning over the engine, which starts the whole combustion process. Once the engine is running, it creates power by burning fuel. The fuel is drawn into the cylinders, where it mixes with the air. This mixture is then compressed by the piston and ignited by a spark from the spark plug. The resulting explosion drives the piston back down, which turns the crankshaft. The crankshaft is connected to the wheels via a series of gears or automatic transmission, and this is what ultimately powers your car. Of course, there are many other systems and components that keep a car running. For example, the alternator provides power to run the car's electrical system and charge the battery. The radiator helps to keep the engine cool, while the oil pump lubricates moving parts to prevent excessive wear and tear. But these are just a few of the many different systems that work together to start and keep your car running smoothly. How can you prevent starting system problems in your car? We've all been there, you go to start your car, and nothing happens. Or, even worse, you turn the key, and the engine sputters weakly before dying. Starting system problems are frustrating and can leave you stranded at the most inopportune times. But there are some steps you can take to help prevent starting system problems from happening in the first place. First, ensure the battery is properly secured in its compartment and corrosion free. Second, check the connections between the battery and the starter for signs of damage or wear. Third, have the alternator regularly checked to ensure that it is providing enough power to the starter. These simple steps can help reduce the likelihood of starting system problems and keep your car running smoothly.